I've just been sent a file from a student who's made a character and is near to rigging it but is just getting stuck on, on the final stages of this. Um, you probably recognise the style, it is a minion. Um, and I can just click on different elements to see that it's a polygon mesh, uh, mostly. Uh, within this I can see the skeleton, so if I click on the hips, it's the root of the skeleton here. It may be called the root joint, uh, but no, it's called hips here. And this is looking like it is the HIK rig, which is in my, which makes it very compatible with Motion Builder, which is one of the stages that we're working towards in our in our workflow. So I'm just moving the skeleton from the shoulder, just to check that it's not been bound already, which it hasn't. Um, just to make sure you know, the collarbone is this one. The actual shoulder you'd move would be this one, left arm, and. But it's set up as all placed in the in the right spots, and um, I'm just going to check what's inside the um, what's inside the project here by looking at the outliner. Now, if I click on this window here, I can see all the parts of that main body poly surface. So it looks to me like. It's all made out of polygon surfaces, which is good because part of my workflow at this stage, um, it's got cameras in there for some reason, but um, part of my workflow at this stage is to combine all the meshes into one. Um, you wouldn't always do that. For example, if you have eyes, you may, may not do that as well. Um, you would possibly, depending on your character, you'd possibly parent that to the top of the head, this, this joint here. Um, in a parent-child relationship, so you would you bring that open up this this hierarchy here, which has all the skeletons, and you can parent the eyes to this position. Now that would allow you to rotate the eyes separately to the body, so you can actually have a control over them as well. Similarly, if you have stuff like armor or something very solid, you want to move along with your character, but don't want to deform in a way that the character would move, um, then you you need to do parenting. For that as well. So just to start off, the first steps I would take before binding this model ready for ready for um, animating is I would just switch to the polygon menu up here. You can select mesh combine. Now combining all of these elements together will give you one single polygon mesh that you can you can work to with the um, skeleton. But just looking at this model, I'm a bit worried about the amount of geometry in there. So I can see there's a lot of geometry in there. And sometimes it slows down completely when you have too much. What I'm going to do is just bring up from the display menu here, the poly count. Just tell it to display the poly count for the scene here. And I can see that the amount of vertices it has is 423,000. Um, similar amount of faces, so that's almost a, is that a million. Yeah, I can't. can't so 845,000 for edges. So there's a lot of information it's working with. So before I do anything else, what I'm going to do is just reduce this. This allow me to work with it a lot easier. Um, so from the mesh option here, I can reduce this. Now I may need to clean up may request that I clean up any non-manifold edges or something similar to that. If it's got vertices that have m more than four edges coming from it, quite often will cause problems. It's got non-manifold um, points. But what we'll do, we'll just try and reduce. You can reduce by 50%, that would halve the amount of vertices in there. I'm actually going to push this up quite high um, to 90%. This will give me a fairly low poly um, no poly character and you can see down at the bottom here it is reducing each of these um, considerably so as that processes I just need to wait for that to, to work that out there are options in here the preserving quads that means it won't triangulate these um, areas which is which are done very nicely in this kind of quad shape 
and I'll just check that. So I've reduced that by about 90%, but I don't think I've lost a lot of information in there. Now, this may get sent back to the modeler or sent on to the process, and someone will say, oh, you've, you've broken something. Perhaps these teeth aren't quite what they were. So maybe if I had of, if I did that again, I may um, do that without including the teeth. So you can select certain elements, and you can actually go through. But I've got this down to under a hundred thousand, which is quite um, a very workable amount of vertices within that. So you can reduce certain elements um, and leave others, and um, it may be something that you need to do if you're system is slowing down a lot when you're working with the skeletons. So once I've done that, like I say, I need to combine these elements together and so again from the mesh menu I can combine. And once I've done that it will just go through and if I look in the outliner window here this will change and this will become a single polygon mesh. So it's called Polysurface 9 and I'll just change that in the attribute of the character mesh um, just so I've got that clear. Now it's left all these kind of empty groups and these kind of just information where we've got transforms on them. Um, so what I want to do again is just kind of tidying up before I go into the process of rigging. I want to go to edit delete all by type history. Now as you can see in the attribute editor, as we've got here, we've got a few things. Polysurface 8, polysurface shape, reduce, unite. There's information kept on all the all the actions you do um, as you go through using Maya. So you can kind of recreate the steps that you've created. By deleting all the history, it will actually just make that mesh a single mesh containing the only um, elements it will contain are the um, materials and, and textures that are attached to that. So those are all along the top there. That's the only things we have in our, our scene now. So once I've optimized this, there are other ways of optimizing. Um, some of those will be using uh, normal maps, which will bring across any detail that um, you have from your high res version into your low res version. But for this, I think. Um, we should be okay. It might need a couple of edge loops in the in the arms if it's not deforming right, but it's actually going to work a lot smoother for me by you doing this process. So now the two things I want to select are these hips, which is the the base of the skeleton, the root of the skeleton, and the character mesh. Now I want to combine those, and I do this from the animation menu set. And we've got two options we're working with. The skeleton is where we made the original skeleton using this human IK. And then we've also using the bind skin here. So we've got smooth bind and interactive skin bind. I use interactive skin bind. I've got very used to it. It's um, probably came out in 2010. The smooth bind is a different version where you paint weights on. So I'm going to just, just choose the one that I prefer. And it's quite quickly come up with this um, capsule. Now I've actually covered uh, the idea of um, weighting and rigging in another tutorial. But first of all, I can see this root joint is actually potentially awkward. So I may just shrink that down. And this is one of the first steps you may, may take because you want that root to just affect the area around there because we've got these kind of other the top of the leg parts there so we don't really want this affecting affecting the legs too much so I'm going to shrink this right down so it's not really affecting anything it shouldn't be and then there is another video on this how to work with these um, these capsules um, by moving the kind of either the red circle or the green top or, or actually translating it using this this trident in here and really adapting that to fit. So I'm not going to go into any detail on that. Um, safe to just test that the rig has worked. Now with this rig I can see the red areas where this this shoulder is going to affect. I really want that just to stop at the elbow so I will just adjust that here and I can shrink that down slightly um, 
just so that it will work up to that point. But what I want to do is just test that it's, it's moving the body with it. And I can see that that is, there's a slight kind of, the elbow is, is shifting away from the body there, but it seems to work pretty well. I'm not sure the elbow would work in that way. What I can see slightly here is this, this part of the body's uh, part of the mesh underneath the body is showing through. So it looks like there's a, a glove on top of the, the minion there. So that may need some work, or it may even need uh, some of the mesh taking out from the original so that it won't show through. Um, there's a few ways of dealing with that. Um, not least the the method of changing the changing the weighting. So um, there's obviously some some adjustments that can be done. And uh, again, so as this top shoulder here should go to the elbow, this one should do the forearm from this this joint here. And if I just test that again, um, going in there and taking the rotate tool, just checking that works. So I can see that again, that's kind of that stretch free, and that may be due to the way I've um, adjusted the adjusted the level of detail that we have on this this character. But you can either make that invisible by changing the faces or the color of those faces, or um, there's a few options you can work with. Possibly um, amputating his arms is a is a is a good option. Uh, so I'll undo that back to the the base pose, um, and so that's really ready. This is becoming animation ready. Once you've rigged this and you've got the the movements working in the correct way. Uh, this becomes animation ready, and the way we we test this is we would put that into um, Motion Builder. So I just save that, and what I would do is to send that to Motion Builder. I select the two elements I need: the character reference and the character mesh. And I'm working on a Mac, so I can't actually send this, but I can export my selection. I'll export that selection. And I just type in here just call it minion rigged and export that into my folder ready so that I could then open that in Motion Builder. Uh, it may be this may be characterized already. We may have a character attached to this HIK rig. So that's one step we may not need to do in Motion Builder. You may need to characterize it. I've had a couple of errors come up, which is about materials. If I click on these errors, it can tell me what they are. Uh, my material X will be exported as a grey Lambert material. So these may need to be set back when we go back to, to Maya, um, just to check that they, they work. You may need to set that, but that's not a uh, the worst case. Um, Plugin does not support surface shaders. Probably surface shaders will convert it to Lambert material. So again, that's that's to do with the textures that have been used on on this model. It's not exporting them via the FBX plugin. Now you should all have the FBX plugin. If you haven't got the FBX plugin, you should be able to look at the um, plugin manager, and within that, you will have an FBX plugin that you can turn on or off from this this position here so uh, FBX Maya bundle I've got it loaded here if you're not able to export or import FBX that's what you need to do so that's made my character animation ready I think there's there's a bit of work to do on the on the rigging just to make sure it all works and um, but essentially it's not too not too bad I think there's one element in there that looks like I would have moved these hips slightly I would probably have had that as a lower leg or the foot see this character hasn't got a knee this may cause problems so the left upper leg I would have had at the top of this leg here um, and moved that along slightly and then brought this other one down this one here to be the kneecap so I can see there's a few few um, issues you'll get when you actually set this to walk. It's one of the things you would look at in Motion Builder.